What up, fam? It's your favorite cousin, your favorite uncle, your favorite nephew, your favorite father, your favorite son, your best friend's best friend. It's me, Dr. Larry, and welcome to Living For You, the YouTube channel. This is a safe space, a positive place in which we come together and we grow together and we get to know each other and we work on beginning to begin to move into our most present life today to where we can enjoy who we are, where we are in life. So welcome to the channel. For those of you who are constant family members, I love you, you're here. You've been loyal since day one. Thank you, I appreciate you. To those of you who are new, welcome to the channel as I stated before. And to those of you who are watching me and seeing my face for the very first time, I am Dr. Larry. I am a certified life and spiritual coach. Um, I help my clients deal with trauma and well, specifically one or two traumas or whatever they're dealing with as many times as they want to, to try to help them find some type of peace and ability to live present in the present moment. If you want to know more about me, you can actually go to www.liveforyoucoaching.com. That is my business. It is Live For You Coaching, a coaching firm. Out there, you'll find tons of resources from blogs. There are courses you can take paid, and there's a free one out there that you can take just to kind of see some of the things that I do. You can also schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me and do a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me also. That's out there. Um, there's many things that are going to be out there useful to you that's going to help you on your journey of healing and self-love once again. Um, that's www.liveforyoucoaching.com. And if you want to follow me on social media, my personal social media is Dr. Larry Smith on both Instagram and on Facebook. I post there pretty much every day, sometimes multiple times a day. So if you want to just kind of keep up with me as I go and get some good wisdom, some good motivation, some powerful messages, as well as some of my own personal stuff, then that's at my Instagram and my Facebook at Dr. Larry Smith. All right, so let's get into it. R. Kelly. I have been holding off, <laughs> not really wanting to have this discussion about Robert Kelly, the singer commonly known as R. Kelly. Um, I am not really mixed on how I feel about the situation, um, but you guys know that he recently was um, found guilty of all of the charges of which he had been uh, convicted of. And so he was convicted. He was found guilty um, of all of those charges and faced a tremendous amount of time in jail. And those charges stem from things like molestation, child molestation, um, sexual stuff and all kinds of just different charges that he was facing. He received guilty sentences on every charge. I think it was like nine of them if I'm correct. And that's just in one court. That's just in the court in Chicago. There's other places as well that he's been charged with crimes. But it is interesting, right? Because R. Kelly was at once at the height of his career, well successful singer, writer, producer, um, everybody wanted to work with him. I remember there was Jay-Z working with him. I remember when there was like Fat Joe and all the rappers were really galvanized around R. Kelly. There were singers who had did songs with R. Kelly. Um, and so he was very much at the height of his career and really on a path to higher heights. And then all of this stuff that we had known about for many years, had, had, had whispered about for many years started to really unfold in a public way. It's, and, and this is like a 30 year like, situation of things that we've been talking about with R. Kelly. And now in the Me Too movement, it really got a lot of steam behind it. And here we are with the conviction of all nine charges of guilty. Uh, kind of putting a close or a tax on a, a, a major career. But the interesting part of it for me is the conversation about redemption. Akon made a statement a couple of days ago, maybe three days ago or so around this time, in which he said that R. Kelly is redeemable and R. Kelly will one day you know, be redeemed. Now that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to go back to the height of his glory and get all his fame back and his loyal fan base back. That doesn't mean that. That just means he's going to have redemption at some point in his life. And I actually believe that and I agree with that because I believe that no matter what a person does, no matter what kind of atrocities or whatever the case may be that a person does, there's always, always, always a chance for that person and all of us to be redeemed. Um, I do not think we have the right <laughs> as poor humans, it's just humans, to forever condemn somebody to the pits of unforgiveness forever. 
there has to be a time in which we let go and we move forward and we allow them to let go and them to move forward. And like I said, that doesn't mean necessarily putting them back in the position in your life or in uh, the world where they were before their their mistake or their mess up or their, their stuff. But it just means that we give them grace for the chance of some point your forgiveness is, has to happen. You, you just have to be able to let it go and move on and move forward in healing no matter what it is. And I know that's a hard thing for a lot of people to do, but one of the biggest things I talk about on this platform is forgiveness. I've had to forgive so many people in my life. I'm sure people have had to forgive me in their lives, and I've had to you know, forgive myself many times in my life, trying to heal, getting to the place of heal, of whole, of happiness, of peace. Because as long as there is any uncertainty in forgiven and forgiveness and there's no forgiveness done, there's always instability. And so in order to get to that place of peace, forgiveness has to happen. And I do believe that one day, collectively, we will get to a place of forgiveness for R. Kelly. And like I said, it doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean we elevate him back to where we, we was. For some people, he never fell. <laughs> and they're going to constantly play his music. I made a decision myself not to. I don't expect anybody to follow my decision, but that was my personal decision because of my personal background with abuse and with child molestation and, and rape and all of these things he'd been accused of. So I'm, I'm not in support of them, so I can't support somebody who had done these things. Um, but like I said, at some point, R. Kelly's going to get to a place of redemption and, and where he is possibly can be forgiven. And you'd be surprised when I post that discussion in a post related to Akon's comment on um, Facebook, the backlash I received, the people saying, well, he did this and this and this and this. Like, it was almost as though people were saying he will never be forgiven. And then there were some people who said he will. And then there were some people who said, I've already moved forward with him and, and I'm not going to ever let him go and I'm going to listen to his music. So it was many different ideals and beliefs behind it but i believe it is important for us as people to be honest and real about what happened and what's happening and who people are and accept the consequences while at the same time not allowing ourselves to be the judge the jury the god the punisher the rewarder as we're that's not our realm that's not what we do and we have to be able to understand that and accept our, our, our limited ability to have knowledge on, on certain things and our limited ability to dictate how certain things happen. Now, with that said, part of my thought process as to why I say one day he'll be redeemed or he can be forgiven is I'm also looking further back. I'm not just looking at the mistakes and the things and the stuff that he did as an adult and into this, you know, the, the, the charges. I'm actually also looking at the fact that R. Kelly was also a wounded, victimized person. And like I said, that's not an excuse for poor behavior because you have to deal with your trauma, but clearly he never dealt with his trauma and he, all he did was took his trauma and use his trauma to be trauma for somebody else. And in that regards, that's when it becomes, you know, that's, that's a, a common thing to happen that instead of finding healing, instead of finding hope, instead of getting to a place of peace, people wind up becoming villains themselves who were once victims. And it, that's a very common cycle that we see. Why? Because it has to be an intentional effort on the person who's experienced the trauma that they experienced to go get the help, to seek the therapy, to get a coach, to do the things that you need to do in order to be able to heal and move forward. Or else you will be a person who will turn that on to somebody else and have them experience the very same trauma, if not worse, than what you've been through. So the healing has to happen. So what it seems to me, and I don't really know the story because I'm like everybody else on the outside, but it seems as though R. Kelly never dealt with his own abuse and his own trauma and the things that he dealt with or his way of dealing with it was causing trauma in other people's lives, which is not a good way to deal with your own personal stuff. But we have to consider that in this whole story. A wounded boy wounded other people. 
A hurt person hurt other people. And as I stated before, that that's a very common thing. And this does not excuse anything that R. Kelly had done. It doesn't. It doesn't excuse any of that. What it does, however, is it draws our attention to trauma. And that's what I'm here for. That's why, that, that, that's my, my background. That's what I do. That's what I coach in. I deal with trauma. So we have to focus on the trauma, right? The trauma, there's people who are feeling a traumatic feeling from seeing R. Kelly and what he'd done. And it's triggering something in them. Making, reminding them possibly of something they had been through something that they're going through at the moment. And I think sometimes the media is irresponsible. I'll say it. The media is irresponsible sometimes because what the media does is it always picks a side. <laughs> what I believe media should be, and maybe this is just me hopeful, wishful thinking, but I believe media should be neutral and unbiased, right? Not pick a side and just tell a story and not sway it in any kind of way. But unfortunately, because of the audience and for dramatic effect and, and and because of the way the world works now the media picks a side and clearly the media had become very anti r kelly and so it, it it lent itself to telling things from that narrative however it's important for us to see the complete story and understand the complete story of a hurt human being a hurt kid who never healed who went on to hurt other people. And now he's left to face with the consequences of what he did to other people, but perhaps the person who did what they did to him never faced the consequences and probably did it to somebody else who in turn hurt somebody else. See, this is the power of trauma. If not dealt with, it can hurt millions of lives. It can hurt millions of lives. Because we tend to think of our trauma as our own personal experience, but your reaction to it isn't. Your reaction to it is everybody's experience who comes in contact with you. And if you never dealt with what you were supposed to deal with or what you needed to deal with to find your home, then chances are the person that these people are interacting with is somebody who is traumatizing everybody who comes in contact with them. R. Kelly was no different. The difference is, is R. Kelly had a team around him supporting him in his trauma-inducing state. And on top of that, because that is also another point, the parents of these children, the parents of these kids that R. Kelly interacted with, where were they? See, they were so blinded by the light of his fame and so drawn to the hope of something greater happening for them and for their kids as, as it relates to fame and celebrity that they didn't even allow themselves to use common sense and common judgment. This is a grown-up. This is a grown person. There's no way a teenager should spend the majority of their time away from their parents with this grown person. On top of that, like I said at the beginning of this call... <laughs> R. Kelly, there's been rumors, and there's a history of at least 30 years worth of history and rumors around potential things that R. Kelly was engaging. We knew about the Aaliyah situation. We knew about some other things. We had heard the stories for years. So if anybody after a certain point was still bringing their kid around R. Kelly knowing these stories, you are just as culpable in this as R. Kelly. Because there's no way a responsible, reasonable adult is going to intentionally endanger their child and bring them around somebody who it is just rumored to be a predator. And we know sometimes rumors are wrong. But in this instance, it was too much smoke. There had to be fire. There had to be fire. So in my opinion, I believe that the parents who brought their kids around R. Kelly and left their kids alone, unattended, around R. Kelly are just as responsible. And, and, and that happens as well quite a bit. And it's not just with celebrities. It's family, friends that your parents just leave you around. It's neighbor, ki high, neighborhood kids and their families that your parents just leave you around. People from the church, cousins and uncles in your own family 
that could be a potential danger to a child, but just people just leaving their kids unattended or not being aware or observant of what's going on in the lives of their kids because they're too consumed with whatever else they got going on for themselves. So I think the R. Kelly story is really a sad story, right? It's a tragedy. It's from someone who came from a tough background, who had an experience, got a chance to see some light, a chance to see some stardom, a chance to get money and come out of his circumstances, but he could not shake his own inner struggles. And he imposed those out on people around him. The weak, the young, women, the vulnerable, those looking for fame, those trying to, to, to get out of a situation he was in when he was a kid. He exploited those things and used those things to satisfy whatever he was trying to satisfy as a capable adult. So it's a tragedy. It's nothing to celebrate. It's nothing to, to run around and say victory and vengeance was served. I don't believe in serving vengeance. I believe that the universe has its way of working through things and it will. You just let it go and it will. It's not my job to try to dispense it. It's not my job to try to pray for it or to hope for it. I just allow however things work to work. Some call it karma. I just say it's the universe correcting itself, correcting things. Everything has to be correct. Everything broken has to be fixed. And that is what the universe does from time to time. That's it. <laughs> I can't talk much about this. Like I said, I didn't want to get on here and have this discussion about R. Kelly because I'm mixed feelings on it, emotional, you know, coming from someone who's experienced trauma and who's experienced abuse. I see the woundedness in him, but I also from that same place can see the woundedness in the people that he victimized. Um, I also at one point enjoyed R. Kelly's music and, and, and saw him as somebody who was deeply talented and very, 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 very gifted. And he's still all, all those things. But unfortunately, that wasn't enough for him. You know, that wasn't enough for him to, to live and to survive and to thrive. And that's unfortunate that it wasn't. But with all that said, I still at my core believe that anybody can be redeemed and anybody can be forgiven. It just sometimes takes time. And so that's why I didn't really want to get on here because I, 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 you know, I'm like, I'm probably like all of you. I'm probably like a lot of you at least. You know, we're, we're torn. We don't understand the world today is shifting and changing and things that were once normal are no longer normal and things that were once received are no longer received. And we're accepting the change. We're growing and we're evolving with the change, but we're also left to have to think about things and, and, and really put our focus on understanding the world. But the first place that starts, family, is within you. Everything about life starts within you. So if you start to do the work that you need to do within you, then you will start to get a better grasp on things around you. And that includes situations like R. Kelly's verdict or R. Kelly's court case. Anyway, that's it. As I always say, I love you guys. I love you with the highest love that you can possibly love. Feel free to go out to www.liveforyoucoaching.com and participate in some of the goodies, buy a course, purchase a course, and start doing the work that you need to work on. Follow me on social media, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and like this video because that helps with the YouTube algorithm or whatever. <laughs> um, and I will see you all in the next video.